Hello everybody, Ian15 here. Before you click off this video, please watch the whole thing. I know I am only 15, but I do know what I am doing. I have studied trailers for about 5 years, I know how they work. So, without further ado, I hope that this video is helpful for you, and I'll see you in a second. Hello everyone, it's Ian15 back for another episode. Today I am going to teach you how to hook up a trailer properly to your vehicle and a few tips on what you might want to know for next time. So, as you, if you might remember from last episode, which is probably quite easy because um, I already have an episode up, um, uh, you'll know that I got a flat tire. And I was, I said I was not going to be able to get it up onto the trailer. Now. I was false. I lied. Lol. Okay. Um, not on purpose, though. What I did is I really cranked up the jack super high so that the tailgate was at an even level with the ground. So that was at a, a similar degree, and the tailgate was at a certain degree. But um, today I'm going to teach you how to hook up um, your, via or your trailer to your truck. The next thing you're gonna need is a trailer hitch. Now, there are a couple sizes out there. There are actually technically three sizes you could use. One and seven eighths inch, a two inch, and two and five sixteenths, I believe. I've, um, yes, that's what it is. I, I haven't used five, two and five sixteenths inch in a while. Um, but um, if you, those of you who may not know what the difference is, well, obviously in size and towing, so, um, first, let's just get the trailer hitch, and I'll show you what I mean. Here, everyone, we have d three different sizes, and this is what I'm talking about. So, this one you're going to use for a much more beefy trailer, so as like an RV. Um, we actually had to take this hitch off, or this ball off, of our weight distributing hitch, which I might make a future video on that, um, just because the coupler... And our trailer was just too small for it. So we had to take that one off. So this is, you'll use, it just can carry more weight. And also, depending on the weight, the way um, it uh, range of up and, up and down, I should say. Then we have our second one. It really just, really a different size of, of ball you're going to use. It's just uh, depending on the the weight of the trailer and uh, how much uh, gross weight you're going to be using. Then we have the 1 and 7 8 inch uh, ball and this is really for your small average 5 by 8 um, little log splitter you pull from maybe property to property like maybe 5 miles at most. Um, you don't go these things you you use very you, you, you can use these for pretty much about anything. Um, even though, like, you can even put a two-inch coupler mouth over uh, one and seven-eighths inch, even if you're not going very far. That is not advised, though. So if you're, um, if you do have the right size, um, then install it on your trailer hitch, and then you will experience much better towing, especially for bigger trailers, as like enclosed trailers. You tow in an ATV or two, uh, plus the weight of the trailer, that is going to be drastic but if you're just moving around your property that is fine too now here we actually have an actual drop down slash um rising hitch so there's um 
you guys probably have seen this before. You see, you walk around the side of your house or the back of your car, and you actually hit your shit on this, and ev everyone hates that. I do too. So, um, as you see, as you can guess, it just there's just a little hole. Um, you can just get a wrench and turn that really tight. Make sure it's really tight, otherwise you don't want that to fall off. Um, yeah. And then obviously this is the pin, and then the little clip. Um, yeah. So let me uh, start talking about a different size couplers. I'm gonna probably look on the internet for different size couplers. This is what I like to call a snake mouth coupler, just because I need to get a I need to get the key for this. But basically, what you do is you lift up this little trigger here, guys. Pull that and lift up. Now that will not work because I have the key in. Um, or the lock on so no one will steal my trailer if you, you tried to put the trailer on the ball um, It will not work especially if it's closed um, so if you, a reason I call it a snake mouth is because This little guy this part will drop down and create just a big enough gap for the Area to go on and then it'll close and then it'll keep it on the ball so let's hook it up to the actual truck, and then I'll, sh and then I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're at the back of your vehicle. So what you're gonna do is obviously gonna find a two-inch receiver. So it's I don't think it's actually two inches. It might be. I have I, I actually haven't gotten a measuring tape in it. But this is called a two-inch square hitch receiver. Um, there is also a one and seven eighth inch receiver, and that's smaller. So you'll find on maybe your smaller. Uh, SUVs and stuff like that and those aren't recommended for big towing so um, usually you'll put a bike rack or a small 5x8 trailer just to get maybe at most from one state to another like if you live in Missouri like me like maybe from Kansas City to uh, I don't know somewhere else <laughs> basically like, like like Kansas City to Kansas so not very far. Um, you're not going to be pulling too much buff with this. So you're going to take your trailer hitch, and it's a square, and you have to make sure that the holes line up with the holes on the side. I'm going to slide that in. Ah, these things are kind of heavy. And what I like to do, don't be care be careful because the e trailer hitch is different. It's just make oh the light's not cooperating for me. Oh, I'm going to put the other side. So basically. Got to make sure that can go all the way through. Hello, hand on the other side. So, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pin, slide that on the way through the hole, and then take your clip and slip that on. It doesn't necessarily matter the way you put it on. I mean, I have a specific way just to slide that on and then put that clip in that, that like that. But there's no real way to do it. Or there's no, um, the way you put it in will not affect your towing. So, one of the things you should t take in mind is when you're towing, make sure you have a correct wiring, um, for your vehicle. Now, if you're going from a 7-pin to a 4-pin, there are adapters out there uh, that will allow you to do that. But they're not 4-pins to 7-pins, so just keep that in mind. Make sure your vehicle is equipped for the right kind of wiring, and always check your um, vehicle's manual to make sure how much your vehicle can tow. Hope you enjoyed that little time lapse. The music probably wasn't that long. So now what you're gonna do, I guess I probably should explain this. Now that you have, you're gonna lift like that. Well, okay, sorry, little up. You're gonna lift that and pull up. And then you see how that dropped down? This will allow it to um, slip on over. So now, you're gonna drag your trailer or back your truck up um, to over the coupler and make sure you have someone else uh, watching uh, your vehicle because or watching the trailer or have like um, little magnets that stick on here or just pay attention um, 
Just pay attention when you're doing it. So, you're just gonna turn the crank, and depending on which way it is, you're gonna lower that onto the ball. And depending, certain trailers have like certain, um, certain kind of um, jacks. So now that that's somewhat off the ground, you're now going to latch it. And depending, you're going to need a, a pin, so like a little pin like this, or a, maybe a lock. And then you're going to slide that on through and cl clip that on. So now that just can't, that cannot come off. If I were to turn that, that will lift up the actual truck. Now, hold on, I got to set the camera. You know, I'll just use my knee. Make sure the wheel. So, you see how the crank will not go anymore that way. That means you need to probably turn the wheel the other way around. Uh, lift it up a little more. And then, nope, wrong way. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to pull this and turn it. Sorry, I have to have my camera at the same time. Pull my camera at the same time. And then that'll just basically slip into place. Now, depend. this is a swing arm jack. Sometimes you just crank it up in the center, depending if it's a, an A-frame or a single frame like this. Um, you, uh, um, you may just like leave it alone, or sometimes you have to swing it up. Or sometimes, depending... Um, you may not have to do anything with it, but just make sure there's enough ground, ground clearance on where you're going. So, for example, you live in the country, you're going to want to have some decent, at least a foot of ground clearance here. Uh, just because this is also, this is a, where it bends. And then also at the rear of the trailer, you want to make sure that the hitch is not too high so if you have too high of a hitch the bot the back part may just have enough space but if you get off your driveway or hit a bump that's gonna bottom out or also vice versa if this is too low to the ground you're and this is the trains are dragging um you're gonna want to um, change that so now what we're gonna do is now we're gonna attach the chains so th you don't actually have to put your chains like this or you don't have to put your chains like that. That's just for storage. You can wrap them around, whatever you want. So there are a couple different ways to attach your trailer hitch chains. Uh, we call we like to call them safety chains. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a basic attachment. So one here and then, oh sorry, I'm gonna take that and one here. Depending on the trailer you have, this may be the only way you can do it. Different chains are different lengths, so just pay attention to that. Now we're going to cross them. Ah! And take that off. And then... Okay. This is um, a good way to put your trailer hitch chains, and this is why. If for some reason you forgot to put this in, or for some odd reason you just forgot to leave this up, and you're bouncing around and all that stuff, let me do a little demonstration. Put the jack up. If I, if you're driving down the road and you're not really paying attention, or you hit a bump or a pothole or something that you're not really paying attention, of this coupler will pop off. That's gonna pull back, and since your jack will not be like this, um, your chains will just you will fall. Oh my gosh, I probably always gonna last this. Basically, what this will do is this cross will keep, will help the trailer hitch stay, it, it'll save the train. Now you can, and also, with this, um, with the height of my dad's F-150, um, we probably wouldn't have a problem just because even if I just had straight, straight, and no crisscross, I would probably be fine. Um, this is also good for turning, so you have equal turning, you know, no slack or anything. Um, you may also have to twist your chains to loosen them, or if you have too tight of a chains, then that's a problem. You'll have to go to the store and uh, get some new chains. So, I'm gonna put this back on. Get off. It's really
really heavy. So make sure, if you're going to try to lift something, make sure you can do it. I'll probably cut that part out. That's stupid. Take a picture for this. Move out of the way. Okay. So, now we'll lower that. Another way to do your chains is actually kind of way I like. So, also, this depending on the kind of hitch you have, this may not work, and depending on the, the length of your chains, this also may not work. So, what you're gonna do is throw your chain over that, it's basically the crisscross, except reverse. I'm gonna throw that on there, and then uh, they'll probably vibrate down there. I shake. And then, there. This way, this will still keep, the, if, when you keep the crisscross there, this will um, still keep the trailer um, on the hitch, and um, this probably may not be the smartest idea, uh, but if you're just like, I'm almost there, I can see it, not from like miles away, but like, like I'm literally five yards away from my destination and it pops off for some odd reason, then you can just keep pulling, or if you don't realize that, or someone flags you down on the road, this is a good way too. But the one thing you want to pay attention to is make sure that the chains are not pinched. So if the chains get pinched, then you're in a pickle. And then they might snap or something like that. Guys, I completely forgot to mention this. When you guys are attaching your chains to your truck or your SUV, if it's a horizontal plate, do underhand. If it's a vertical plate, do overhand. Next video, I will actually be taking off this entire wheel on the mower. I will be taking off that entire wheel um, just because my dad actually wants me to do it. I'm not sure if it'll be possible. Um, we're gonna have to get in there. But until then, this is EM15 signing out. If you enjoyed the video, leave likes and uh, subscribe for more content and uh, ring that notification bell so you know exactly when my video comes out. If you guys uh, disagreed or have a different way of attaching your trailers, um, let me know down in the comment section. I will be happy to respond to you or I, I basically read every one of your comments because right now I have basically no viewers except for like 10 or 13 of you. But I still count you guys. So, um... Stay tuned next time, and I will see you next time when we take off that wheel. Ian15 is signing out.